So earlier we looked at the graph of something like z equals y squared, which you might recall gave us a, uh, a parabolic cylinder, which looks something like this. The idea being that uh, no matter what the x value is, the, the trace in y and z is always going to be the same parabola. And since it doesn't matter what x is, this end just ends up extending back for all values of x. So then the question becomes, well, what happens if we take that basic shape and, let's say, add x to it? So now the traces are going to change with x, right? So if x is 0, we'll still get the same basic parabolic shape. But if x is 1, then our parabolic shape is going to be shifted up 1. If x is 2, it's going to be shifted up 2. If it's negative 1, it's going to be shifted down 1 and we're going to get these shifts of, right, the pluses sh means we're shifting this basic parabolic shape by the x value. Now this was the trace in y and z again. If we instead looked at x versus z, notice that when y is 0, we would get z equals x. If y was 1, we'd get z equals uh, 1 plus x. If z, if y was 2, we'd get uh, 4 plus x, and we're getting lines in the other direction. So you can sort of kind of imagine if we were to combine those together, what we are going to get with y squared plus x is a sa same sort of parabolic cylinder shape, but instead of extending directly horizontal in the x, it is going to extend, uh, it's going to be shifted up in the uh, z direction as x increases. Now we can make this even more interesting by imagining a case like uh, z equals y squared plus x cubed, where now we're not shifting uh, the, these parabolas by a line, but we're shifting it by a cubic. So not surprisingly, in y and z, we're still going to see parabolic shapes uh, so when w x is 0, we're going to get a basic parabola. When x is 1, we're going to get a shifted parabola, right? It's going to be shifted parabolas up and down. Meanwhile, in x and z, uh, when y is 0, we're going to get a basic cubic. When y is 1, we're going to get a shifted cubic. And so we're going to get shifts of the cubic function. So from one direction, we're going to see quadratics. From the other direction, we're going to see cubics. And if we take a look at that, graph, notice that, and I'm going to change my range here a little bit, my domain, so that we can see this a little better. Uh, so we're going to go from negative 1.5 to 1.5. So from one direction, looking at it from this side, we're seeing lots and lots of cubic shaped functions. Uh, from this direction, we're seeing lots and lots of parabolas, and notice that those parabolas are being shifted along the cubic function. I mean, if we wanted to try to graph this uh, by hand, you could actually imagine trying to sketch in, uh, I don't know how all well this is going to work here, but you can sort of imagine sketching a cubic and then trying to draw in parabolas being shifted by those cubics. That's not very good. But, so it sort of gives us a parabolic slide uh, in a cubic shape there. Uh, and that's giving us a shift. And we can really shift any kinds of functions here. So we could take this uh, quadratic and shift it by, let's say, a sine function. And if we extend out our domain now, uh, you can see that we have that quadratic shape here being shifted along a sine function, and we've got sort of a sinusoidal parabolic trough thing going on. Uh, so whenever we have a function of x adding to a function of y, we're going to get this sort of shift-type behavior.